What's what's gray and white and looks great on firefighters and cops? Building fires. World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> do you see yes, yes, I do. The people inside there were some of the fastest readers in the world. They went to like 110 stories in like seven seconds. So it was amazing. Jet fuel, burn, steel beams. Um, by the way, you, did, you asked the question, did we see Tower 2 get hit on that television? One thing we do know is that we did, that no television saw Tower 7 get hit. Towers. <laughs> Why not? But there's the thing. We shouldn't be laughing. Why not? Is it funny? If it's funny then we should laugh. If it's not funny, then we should not laugh. But one thing we certainly shouldn't do is tell people how it is that they're supposed to process grief, or how they're supposed to process history, how they're supposed to process anything. You'll find that the people who tell you not to laugh at things are, the, are typically the, the most joyless human beings on the face of the planet. These are the people who tell you what words you're not supposed to use, and I don't know where that word supposed to is even coming from, but what jokes you're not supposed to make. You know, what's so funny? Everything. If you can look at it the right way. If you can look at it the right way. Because that's one of the things that makes us human. It's the ability to process tragedy. And one of the best ways, one of the most efficient ways to do is to, is to laugh. I mean, that's exactly the, that's the formula for comedy. It's tragedy multiplied by time equals comedy. How much time do you have to have? That depends on each person. Depends on how, on how quickly you can get it. Now, there's a difference between making fun of people and, and laughing about things. You probably shouldn't make fun of people. Um, I'm not saying we shouldn't, but you know, if, you have, if you have good friends, of course you do it. But there's always this line of, well, you're making fun of people. Don't tell people what they're doing, man. You know, we process things differently. And we look at something like 9-11 that happens, and we think this is a, such a, a world-shaking event. But that's because we lack a perspective on history. First off, like, we were saying earlier, we, we, we tend to think things are so terrible today. That's because we don't just lack perspective, we lack gratitude. We lack gratitude for the fact that we stand on the shoulders of giants who came before us and, and put together a society that's so incredibly complex that not, not one of us can possibly understand all of it. And we walk into a room and we, we, we push, we just like flip a little switch over there and all of a sudden the lights turn on. How does that happen, man? Like, does anybody know how any of this stuff works? Like, what's in the light? Mm -hmm. Bright shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, when you, you click the button, all of a sudden it just sets that off and it turns on. No, we have no idea how most of this stuff works. But we go in somewhere and, and we have slow Wi-Fi. We don't have no Wi-Fi. We just have slow Wi-Fi. And we're very upset about it because we lack gratitude. And one of the things that, that a, a perspective of, of history will give us is a level of gratitude, as well as a level of understanding. Um, in your US history classes, if you were to read about what led up to the, the American Revolutionary War, how long is that? Like a page, maybe? A couple paragraphs? It sounds like everything just happened incredibly fast. But what happened was, is there's some guy somewhere, and a, and a British soldier came over and stole one of his apples. And that guy you know, shrugs his shoulders like, what a dick. And he walks away. And then like two years later, something else happens. And like, you know, six months later, something else happens. But when you read about it in the history book, it sounds like everything happened overnight. History is, history is patient, man. History is patient, and history is not politically correct. History is, is, is we're not just reading history, man. History is reading us. It's, turning, it's just turning the page to see what happens next. Because what's going to happen next, one thing we do know for a fact, the characters of every story die, but history continues, and we are the characters in the st in the in the his in the in the story of history. Matt, you know what 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 in in Ligoti's mind really defines history? Madness, okay, chaos. This is true. Bone deep mayhem. That's true. Devastation of innumerable souls. Yeah, and we're perishing and we're screaming, and our perishing and our screaming is inconsequential, man. It's inconsequential. And there's a couple of ways that we can approach that now. We can approach that from this perspective of, so therefore nothing matters. And if nothing matters, the upside to that is, well, now nothing matters. We can just do whatever we want to do because it doesn't matter. 
Do we live or do we die? Doesn't matter. Do I, something small, do I go to college or not? Doesn't matter, man. Do I have a family? Doesn't matter. And then that's the upside, because that means no responsibility. But then, of course, the downside to that is nothing matters. So if, the, if nothing matters, that means there's no achievement. There's nothing to look forward to. There's nothing that means anything to us, because the things that, that contribute to a meaningful, purposeful life are things that, that, that matter. Now think about the things in your life that you'd rather be doing right now. They're probably things that matter to you in some way. But if nothing matters, it's indifferent. Are you here or are you there? It doesn't matter. But you'll also find that the things in your life that, that matter the most are also going to be the things that, that also increase the highest level of responsibility for you. If you're going to go to college, it's a high level of responsibility, man. It's a lot of studying. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of time. You're basically putting your life on hold for five years. And you might think, like, well, it's only five years. You realize that you're, if, you're, if you're considering that you're going to live to be, let's say, 100 years, you know, that's, that's 5% of your life. And that's if you make it that far. You're probably not. So you're probably talking about putting your life on hold for 7 to 10% of your life. That's a long time, man. You know, especially when you consider that, you know, 18 years of your life are already in the can. And you weren't even conscious for most of it because you were a little kid and you weren't thinking about things. So it's not a small thing. It's a huge responsibility. But you're going to find that all meaning and all purpose are to be found on the other side of responsibility. We tend to think of responsibility as a great thing. It's like we think, oh, I want to be, I want to be rich so that way I don't have to worry about responsibilities. <coughs> really? You think if you're rich, you've got no responsibilities? You have a massive responsibility. You have to manage a fortune. You have to manage a life that's, that's kind of predicated on a, on a fortune. You have to manage the people who come and, come and go in your life. You have tremendous responsibility. You have to manage the money so it lasts. And then, of course, you're going to have to find something at the end of all of it to make it worthwhile because one thing that we do know from people who make a tremendous amount of money haven't you noticed how much time they spend trying to give it away later in their lives? It's like they make it and they feel terrible about it or they, they realize that there's, that there's a lack of meaning that's there. And so they try to find some, some meaning in all that work. In other words, something to make all of that responsibility worthwhile. And so those are the two views that you can take. Yeah, history licks a finger and turns the page. History doesn't care about you. you live, we live in a universe that does not care about our opinion of it. I mean, I was reading a, 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 an article last year, and for some reason it just struck me. It was over in, over in Scotland. They discovered an ancient battlefield, and I think they found like 1,500 skeletons, people who died in some battle, you know, whatever it was, 1,000 years ago. Um, 1,500 people who died in this battle 1,000 years ago, and we don't know any of their names, man. I don't know any of their names. Those 1,500 souls just died there, and we would have no even understanding that they even died if we hadn't found their, their skeletons. They had loved ones, probably. They probably had families, people who probably said, You're, we, will, we will remember you forever. Asterisk. Forever sometimes means 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I don't remember if it was in this class before, but if I were to ask you, how many of you guys know your parents' names? And your hands would go up. If I told you to keep your hands up, I'd ask you, how many of you know your grandparents' names? And how many of you know your great-grandparents' names? And most of the hands would go down at that point. How many of you know your great-great-grandparents' names? Almost all of your hands would go down at that point. So when we say, I'm going to be remembered. Three generations? Yeah. Reminds me of Nebuchadnezzar. You guys know Nebuchadnezzar? You don't know Nebuchadnezzar. I clutch my pearls. Nebuchadnezzar was a Babylonian king who conquered the entire known world of his day. This guy conquered the world. And we have no idea who he is in 2023. What do you think you're going to do that's going to be greater than conquering the entire world? And yet we sit there and say, I'm going to live my life to be remembered. Mm, history's going to turn the page, man. And I'm not telling you this to, to depress you. I'm telling you this to, I'm telling you this to free you. Because the truth, because it's true. And the truth is the very thing that sets you free. If you can accept that history is going to turn the page on you, it's going to lick its finger and turn the page and not care 
Well, now you're free to make something of your own life matter. You don't have to matter to history. And if you want to matter to history, here's what your life is going to be like. You're going to be criticized in life, and then you're going to be loved in death. And you'll never get to see the, the value of it. That's, that, I mean, that's, that's a, that, there's a lesson from history there that's going to repeat. You'll be criticized in life, and then you're going to be loved in death. And if I told you that, I wonder how many of us would choose still to want to be great. Or if we'd want to make something of the time that we have here matter in some way. I can't tell you how to do that. You have to find out for yourself how you make that thing matter. One of the great things is you can probably measure, you can probably look at your own life now and, and figure out for yourself, am I doing right now what matters? I mean at this moment right now. Not like my life generally. It's a good measurement also. But at this moment right now. Because all of us have a past. All of us have a history. But that page has been turned. So it's not real anymore. It's only in the past. And then a lot of us have hopes and aspirations and dreams for the future. That's not really real because it hasn't happened yet. And how many of our, our hopes and dreams happen the way that we actually want them to? Ask lots of people in your life. Maybe in a grand scale, sure. But it's not real. It hasn't happened yet. So that means that the only thing that's real is what's happening right now. And so if you're going to put your, your stock in, in, in the most important parts of your life, the past is nice, man, but it's in the past. The page has been turned. Certainly, put some hope in the future. But don't just hope for the future. It's what you're doing right now, literally, at this very second, at 925, that's going to be setting you up for that future. And you ask yourself, Am I, is what I'm doing right now somehow contributing to, a, to, to that better future that I say I want? Because we say lots of things, man. You know, we say we love each other. Of course we don't. We say that, we, that we're happy when most of us aren't. We say lots of stuff, man. We say lots of stuff. But does it correspond to reality? Is what you're doing right now really contributing to that future that you say that you want to have, or the hope that you have for it, or, or forget the future. Is it just making you a better person so that you, when you get to a future, because we'll all get to a future, how, how much of a future we have is gonna vary. Some of you maybe have one year of a future. I've had those students. students I, I have students who didn't even make it out of high school. I had students who died while they were in my class, not my classroom, but my class. They didn't make it out. And I remember him, Aaron. Last thing I ever said to Aaron was, you look like shit, Aaron. And he laughed. He said, Scalin, I feel like shit. I said, you should probably get that checked. He said, I think I am. And rather than going, um, he's going to go to the doctor when he went home, but rather than going to the doctor, he went home to take a nap to see if he felt better. Never woke up. Never woke up. And that was in September of that school year. He had less of a future than you all have. Everybody who's here right now has made it further in your life than, than, than Aaron made it in his. How much time are you going to have? I don't know, man. I don't know, but if tomorrow doesn't come, today didn't matter anyway. So yeah, expect a future, prepare yourself for it, but make the most of this moment right now. And I don't just mean like, you know, throw caution to the wind. What I mean is that you make the most of the moment right now because that's what a meaningful life is made of. Moments, great moments. That's what history is made of. History is made up of a lot of moments. A lot of skeletons buried underneath the, the dirt that we still, we've never found and probably never will find. A lot of soldiers taking an apple from somebody. And then we have these big events, which only appear even as a blip. I mean, even look at 9-11. It's only, it was the biggest thing in the world. Led to, you know, we'd leveled two countries from it. And you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people dead, if not millions. And it's only a blip in history. It's not even one of the biggest things. You can't worry about history. History is going to happen. What you have to, to maximize probably is you. Because what he's saying is true. But the question is, now what? Still working it out. <clears throat> Questions? Comments? Concerns? Complaints? Criticisms? Critiques? Happy Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I was rethinking our entire life. Good. And it was worthwhile. <laughs>